Milo, I'm going to give you a challenge here. So go ahead and hit a 75 yard shot here. A 75 yard shot? Yep. Right on it. And now the challenge will be with that same club, I want you to land the ball right on top of that ball. Which went know, in that sprinkler head. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know where that's at. So that, you know, guessing that's, a, that's about like 35 yards or 30 yards. Uh, I pulled it. That's all right, real close though. So, so what I want to talk about today is when, especially like when you're, you're playing tournament golf and you're really trying to, to get to the next level of scoring, let's say 75 and below. What do you do to control how far your wedges go? Especially on these tweener shots from like, 100 yards all the way into like 20 yards. So How do you control your distance? It's a combination of speed of and tempo of the swing and length. So depending on if I want to hit a high floater, a high, I might hit a high floater 20 yards with almost a full swing, but really slow. So it's tempo, length of your swing, and then also the loft that you're putting on yep. the shot. Exactly. Okay, so let's try to quantify that for people. So what are the checkpoints? Like if they have, like what can they do at their range or if they get out on the golf course late in the day, what can they do to start building some awareness for distance control? So first thing I like to do is I like to kind of give myself a, a checkpoint, three different swings. So maybe shaft parallel, arm parallel, arm three quarter, uh -huh. and kind of get a, a range of those. For like, so how many wedges do you have? I carry four wedges. So you have a, you have a, a yardage for each one of those on all your four of your wedges? Yeah. Well, that covers. That covers most 12, everything. Yeah, yeah, a lot of shots. Yeah. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to play. I call it ladders. So I'll start off and hit a little ten-yard shot, and then try to hit one yard farther increments all the way out. See if I can. You know, you might start off hitting five-yard farther increments in the beginning. Yeah. And well, let's try to do that almost as like a team competition, and and we'll. So we'll do like a team ladders thing, and we'll talk about the techniques of how to hit it further. So you start us off with like a short one here. Okay. And then we'll, we'll try to get, we'll try to get like five or six balls as tight as we can. So hit like to the sprinkle head, I guess. Oh, you want me to start yeah, with like further. a 30 yard shot? Yeah. Okay. Hit the sprinkle. Right Okay. Okay. So we'll go with, so now I got to yeah, land it at the, at the ball or further. Yeah, you want to land it right about where the ball stopped. So you want to go no shorter, right? Yeah, we want to make sure it doesn't end up shorter. Right. All right, so in our last video about loft, we were talking about standing up on it a little bit to give it some loft. When, as we swing, instead of loading into the ground and using more pivot force, I'm going to feel like I stay tall and almost stand up a little bit as I hit it, which is going to force the club to unload. And is your tempo going to be a little more It's going to be a little bit, yeah, slower. a little smoother, a little longer motion. So it'll look something like this. Ball a little more forward. There we go. I'm gonna try that. And I feel like my rib cage both sides would be perfect for this. Okay. Oh, good. Pretty good. All right, so now I've stretched you out to about... Probably about 45 yards. Yeah. So, like, if this is a golf course shot, what are you going through in your mind to, to make sure that you hit this 45 yards carry? Well, I kind of know, I have some checkpoints. I know that if I take the club to left arm parallel with this club and just let it go through smooth, it's going to go 50 carry. So it's going to be just small, just barely smaller than that. Okay. Really good. So if you're doing this with one of your tour players or, or uh, playing professionals that you teach, what will this session look like if, if you feel like, especially with your LPGA tour players, if you feel like they just don't have a good idea for how far to hit their wedges, will you like come out with a notebook and like start start cataloging? Like what is the process like of going, getting somebody to know how far they hit these shots? It's so much of it's just feel, mm -hmm. so it takes practice. There's not really a... I mean, do you have them write down left arm parallel, 54 degrees goes this far? I don't. Okay. They all, they know, you know. I'm, but if they don't know, I'm saying. If like they the, don't the know, yeah, sure, you, you write it down. Yeah. Okay, where's that ball? Okay, I think it's, 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 it's,
one along the yeah, the third ball out there. So how many how many it's about sixty yards? Yeah. That mine landed about four yards past yours, so it's probably where it's sitting, it's probably fifty five yards. So you want to hit the sixty yards. So if I'm hitting a constant trajectory here, it's just gonna be a little bigger swing, same tempo. Now if I wanted to take the trajectory up or down, then I would change the length of the swing and tempo. All right, so let me, let me see you hit a, a high one that then lands on this, was it almost 70 yard, or 65 yard shot. That's really good. Okay, let's try one more. All right, so now let's, let's go back out to I want to hit one in here, Milo, that just to talk about distance control. Like, let's say we I have my 60 degree wedge and my 54 degree wedge, but the, the, how hard effort-wise should people be swinging their full swing wedge shots? I'd say most, probably 75% at, at max. You don't want to try to hit them that hard. But like with a seven iron, you, you go up to like 90%, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But with wedges, you why don't you like swinging too hard with wedges? The harder I swing, they don't, the amount of difference you get in distance is minimal. You know, if I swing all out at a sand wedge, I might hit it 120. If I swing three quarter speed, I might hit it 115. So is it really worth the right. added effort to hit it five yards farther? So, so, so you're really thinking, when you're hitting a full swing wedge shot, you're thinking more about uh, what on, in your swing? The tempo of it, your balance? Just tempo. Tempo. So it's just... So if I'm going just past that picker there, tempo. There you go. Okay, so it stretches out to, to a full swing wedge shot just past the picker there, or not full swing, but this is this is your, like your 115 yard club full swing? It is. So yeah, we're taking 25 yards off or so. Oh yeah. Probably 100 yards right there. So what's your favorite drill for wedges? I know that we did the ladder, but what's your favorite technical drill as far as like, what do, are people usually too steep with their wedges? Or? Generally too steep. So what what's your favorite kind of shallowing drill for wedges, like if, if they're doing that? So I like to see people hit the ball on as low of trajectory as possible with very little divot. Let's try that. So nothing really technical, just like try to figure it out. Try to figure out how to do it. Really low with just this. So if I put it on this grass, I should see no dirt, only bruised. Yeah, you just, well, you might see a little dirt, but you want to try to get the ball to come out. See how that divot looked right there? Yeah. Something like that. That was pretty good. That's pretty good. A little bit of dirt, but. Yeah. But that's, that's a nice shallow divot. Yeah, and the, and the flight of that was more like your wedge shot. So. The thing is, too, that I, that I didn't realize is sometimes I'd be like, why is my divots on the practice swings different? When you hit the ball, it forces the club down, huh? Somewhat. In, into, the, into the grass. So, really, like, almost no divot, but launch it low. Yep. That was really good. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. You can see more with Milo at Golfletics. Also, check out Be Better Golf net slash premium where we go if you want to hit your driver better i think it's the the best thing we've made on the channel about being more consistent with what you do into the ground really leads to being more consistent with how you're seeing your ball fly thanks for watching guys it's called the driving force at bebettergolf.net slash premium bye so it's part of the the stretch shorten cycle it's like a guy getting ready to jump you fall first and then you go up you yeah. don't you don't see many people go down here and stop and then Jump up. Yeah. But as we get older and as our nervous systems stop functioning as quite as well, then that stretch short cycle doesn't work quite as well as yeah, it right. used to. And so some people may have to load a little bit slower. But the explosiveness goes away. So it you're gonna does. things the dynamics change. And that's where again we can Goldilocks that later and, and see what works best for each person. Yeah, so just like we, we figured out we gave you guys a roadmap of how, how you can figure out how much to load into your trail side. We'll do something similar. But before we do that, Milo, just hit one normal for us. <laughs> there's, there's a 
Milo ball. Wow, that was great. <laughs> 171 ball, 123 ball speed and out of the heel a little bit, but uh, dead straight. So, um, My Milo, for you, what does, the, does, I noticed from a movement standpoint, when you drop, your, your hips get deeper too. Uh -huh. So kind of just talk about the kinematics of what's happening in your body when you're doing that drop. So what my body's actually doing is it's, at the top of my swing, I'm kind of in extension with my, my back. My legs, my right legs kind of extended a little bit. So as I change direction,